Over to you, sir. Let's talk about the 203K way, man. Cool, guys. So uh, welcome. I'm Matt Percaro. I'm excited to do this, Jay. Thanks for the opportunity. Jay is the absolute man. He's one of the real ones in this whole real estate investing world on the internet. Um, and uh, it's been cool being able to connect with people like Jay and everyone else that's on this call. Um, it's just been a, a quite a wild ride the last couple of years. I started something called the 203K Way and it's a community I'll tell you guys a little bit more about. But I guess to start off, just to get everybody's insight, um, go ahead and type a me in the chat. If you have ever heard of the 203K loan, if you've ever heard of the 203K loan, type me. If you've never heard of it, say no idea or no, not me or I just like to see, get an idea on who number one even knows um, <laughs> all the Jay Helmses, uh, all the you know, shadies. If you're if uh, you're gonna use the name, you, you gotta you gotta up your up your education. That's why you're here today, right? No, I'm just I'm joking. I'm that's joking. it. No, I love it. All right, not me, no idea. All right, so it's it's a it's a mixed bag. Um, it's a mixed bag. So of the people of the people that have heard about it. Who has heard that raise your hand or raise your virtual hand or maybe just say me in the chat, type me in the chat if you've heard it's an absolute nightmare or it's not worth it or it's too much paperwork or anything like that. Me. All right. Well, the one real Jay Helm said me. Um, okay. So, so mixed bag guys. So, um, so I don't have a formal presentation for you guys. Reason being is number one, I'm really bad at making them. Uh, and, uh, it, and it just would be really bad and nobody would pay attention. I would just type a bunch of crap. And number two, I'm just an off the cuff type of person. So hopefully everyone's okay with that. Everyone cool with that. Awesome. All right, guys. Um, so basically what this whole thing is and, and what I'm going to get into today is, uh, I'm going to show you my version of the presentation. So let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. Everybody see my screen here. All right. And it's, uh, this is my presentation, guys, and it's just an outline so I stay on track and not waste everybody's time. So, all right, uh, how to buy a two to four unit property with only three and a half percent down, even in a seller's market, even in the craziness right now. So um, for those of you that don't know me, um, my name is Matt Percaro. Uh, I started something called the 203K Way Community. And essentially what it is, is I help aspiring real estate investors, especially ones that are trying to get their next first deal or, or maybe just their next deal, um, use their first house as an asset as opposed to a liability. I'm sure everyone here is, rate, is list, as read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I agree with him on a lot of senses in that first house could be a complete liability uh, or it could be an asset. And, and one of the ways... Um, one of the ways we use it, at, create an asset out of that is using the 203K way strategy. So who the hell am I? Again, I'm Matt Percaro. I got started in real estate investing back in 2016. Um, I had tried and failed multiple different real estate investing strategies. I'm out here in New York, um, investing in Long Island, New York, which is very high cost of living, high taxes, everything, very competitive and very hard to uh, be a little fish there. Um, I was trying to wholesale. I was trying to, I tried all different wholesaling strategies, bandit signs, yellow letters, uh, door knocking, um, tried to do seller financing, tried to get people, to, tried to raise money and try to flip houses with other people's money when, you know, they're like, wait, you've done this how many times? And I said, zero. And they're like, how old are you? And I say 24. And they're like, okay, um, we're probably not going to give you any money, any of my hundred thousand dollars or $150,000. So try a lot of different strategies. Couldn't really crack it. Um, lo and behold, I, I went to, I was invest, I was in a couple different mastermind groups and I was in one of my local group and I met this lady, uh, named, um, named Melissa. Melissa was the head of the real estate investing association in my area. And she's an all-star, right? She had like eight kids, has eight kids and also has like a thousand doors is the member of this chairperson of that. Just like one of those people are like, how the heck do they do all this? Like I, I could hardly like be like, I could hardly feed myself, let alone she has eight kids and all this other stuff. So anyway, so I took I took a lot of what she said to heart, right? And so I brought her to the side one day. I'm like, listen, I've been trying this thing for a while. I can't crack it. I'm trying wholesaling. I'm getting a couple leads. I tried mailing. I'm, I'm trying all my, I'm trying to make something work. Like, what can I do? Like, do you have any other ideas? And, um, you know, she said, well, you know, there's something called a 203k loan. And I said, okay, I never heard of that. What's that? And she's like, well, 
what I would do is I would use it if I were you. And what I would do is I would look for a property um, that's really beat up. Um, what's cool about the 203K loan is it's an owner-occupied loan. You have to live there. So you don't have a house yet, right, Matt? I'm like, no. She said, you don't have a house yet. So you could leverage that first-time home buyer slash owner-occupancy to use one of these owner-occupancy loans that's effectively like a hard money loan or a fix and flip loan. Um, what it allows you to do is it allows you to purchase properties as is that um, you know you normally wouldn't be able to get with conventional bank financing, and it, you only need three and a half percent down because it's an owner occupant loan. You only and low you know low interest rate. You're paying you know your prime interest rates. And um, <clears throat> what I would do is I would look for a really beat up house, renovate the house in Long Island and New York. Basements are very popular, so she's like live in the basement, rent out the upstairs, um, build that all out live for a little while, you know, the FHA loans require you to have it for a year, and then go and repeat the process. So lo and behold, I, I was blown away. I was like, wait, number one, I could put less than 20% down. I'm, I was being told by hard money lenders, I got to put 25% down, 30% down. You were telling me I only have to put three and a half percent. And the only caveat is I have to live there. Now, obviously, if you're watching this, and you, you know, you already have a single family home and residence and um, you know, there's a lot of this, this isn't always for everyone, but there's always different ways to cut it. And we can get into more of that later. But the whole thing was like, this was a big epiphany for me. So I, I went home and I started Googling 203k loans. And I'm like, I need to learn more about this shit. And like, there was nothing there, right? There was nothing there. I mean, it was just like very piecemeal information. Some people bitching about it, that it's too tough and all these different, like, and I'm just going down a bunch of different rabbit holes. So I, 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 I kind of put it on the back burner. Um, fast forward a little bit. I, I had some money saved up in the bank. I was working a couple jobs. I was just I was just really saving as best I could. I called the only person that I knew uh, that understood this or understood loans. He was a mortgage officer. He's the only person I knew. It was a family friend. And um, I, I asked him about the 203K. I was like, do you know anything about this? He's like, yeah, man, let's do it. It's going to be great. He's a typical fast talking New York guy. Before I, knew, I called him in my car, I was into my cubicle. And by the time I got to my cubicle, he had my social, he had like everything. And before that, at the end of that day, I was pre-approved. Um, so it was crazy because I like went to just making a phone call, asking him about it to actually going throughout the process. So um, very quickly, I started learning the ins and outs of this thing. And I ended up um, placing a whole bunch of offers. And I also realized during this process that you could bid on foreclosures. You could take on as is properties, auction properties, guys, any of these qualify. It's not only for cash buyers. It's any, 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 it's any property that um, any property in any condition you can buy it. Right. So um, lo and behold, I found a two unit property and I found out about like the multifamily house hacking thing um, by accident. So being, you know, a single guy um, making like a starting engineer salary in New York, I did not have enough money on my own to qualify to purchase a two family, let alone a single family property in my market. But what ended up happening as I was looking and placing offers and getting rejected, 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 uh, there was something that I saw that was a two family and it was a little bit over my price range. And I told, I said to my loan officer, I'm like, I can't afford this. He said, no, you can. I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, what's the beauty of the FHA loans and these 203K loans is they allow you to build in up to, um, they allow you to build in the, uh, the uh, forecasted rents of the other units to qualify for the loan. I'm like, okay, so holy crap. So I essentially get a $2,000 a month raise with the other tenant. And he said, yeah, sure enough, my debt to income ratio went up and my approval went just enough that I could qualify to purchase the house, right? And purchase the property. So um, what ended up happening was I, I placed an offer and this was a house nobody wanted, man. I mean, it is literally a crack house. There was poop all over the walls. I mean, it was disgusting. It was like absolutely disgusting, but this was literally the only thing I could afford. And honestly, really where the 203k loan shines, because again, you're able to buy anything in complete dilapidation and build it into something nice. And you could only, you could do it with the smallest form of leverage. So what ended up happening was I purchased it and um, I, I don't want to, I won't go into the details, but I'll go into a little more on how you guys can leverage this in a second. But um, essentially what happened was I got into this, um, you know, I picked it up for 270,000. Again, this was the biggest dump on all of Long Island. It was absolutely, nobody wanted this thing, except I guess I fell into it because it's the only thing I could afford. Um, so it was a complete, complete piece of crap, uh, like, in an interesting part of town, but like decent, right? And I ran the numbers and I'm like, hmm, I think, you know, if I put 80,000 into it, probably going to be all in for about 350. It's probably going to be worth in the fours when I'm done, just looking at comps. And I, 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 all I knew was all my 
all my learning and eBooks and, 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 you know, podcasts and books that I read on bigger pockets and all that stuff. And I'm just trying to put two and two together. I'm like, I think this is good, but like, I only have to put out three and a half percent. And in this case, it only was about 9,500 bucks. Um, so I put 9,500 bucks down fast forward to the point I asked earlier, is it a crazy pain in the ass? Yeah, it is. Especially you have no idea what the hell you're doing. It's a nuanced loan, but it's one of those things, guys, with great power comes great responsibility. I make the comparison all the time. You have a circular saw, right? Circular saw is a great tool if you know how to use it. You give a circular saw to a carpenter, he can make really nice cuts, clean, fast, way better than a handsaw. You give a circular saw to a three-year-old, you're going to get a very, very different result, right? The, 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 the three -year -old Do not give a circular to... saw to a three-year-old. Do Just not give don't it. Don't do right. it. <laughs> but the, the thing is, is the, the 203K in this case is the circular saw and the three-year-old is 99% of people that use this freaking loan, okay? Gotcha. <laughs> and, that, and that's what I'm getting at is it's, it's very powerful, but most people don't know how to use it. Now, I figured it out the hard way and obviously I've since understood it and done it multiple times and helped many other people do the same. And there's a streamlined calculated process to this. But at the end of the day, um, I, I struggled through it, but it was still worth it. I only put three and a half percent out of pocket. I was all in for 350,000. Again, it, you build the renovation costs into the loan, right? So all the renovation, you do not have to pay the renovation out of pocket. You build every, you wrap everything in. That's why these banks allow you to purchase these properties with only, you know, you know, they, they allow you to purchase these properties as is because they know that you are doing it subject to the repair being done, right? It's an ability to get people to take advantage of this product, live, live in a thick for upper and, and, and re rehab a lot of these kind of junker properties in the area, right? So when all was said and done, um, I got the appraisal back eight months later and I reappraised because I was going to refinance out of immediately and it reappraised at 480. Um, so in six months time, I made $130,000 on a $9,500 down payment. Um, lo and behold, now, I mean, I still have that property. I rent out both units for 2000 a month cash flow, And then, I mean, the equity now on it is probably like with the way the market's done. I mean, we probably have 300 grand in equity in it. Um, but the point I'm saying this, and it's not to brag or anything like that. It's just that I didn't know that this loan existed. Number one, I didn't know that this loan existed. And number two, the, the little information that was out there about it was just not helpful. It was from lazy realtors, lazy lenders, people that say that it's not worth the time when, when you look at what I just did and I fumbled through every step in the process, it's absolutely worth the time. There is no more powerful, I will, I will say this as confidently as anything, there is no more powerful leverage out there to flip a house than the 203k loan. Now, again, given the caveats to it, given the owner occupancy rule, you only have to be there for a year, theoretically, after closing from the closing date to when you're out, that's only the rules that you need to be in there. So theoretically, but there's nowhere else that you could put such low amount out of pocket, get a such a low in, even if interest rates going up like crazy, it's still better than hard money. It's still better than any other other investor loan. And you are getting all the benefits of doing a flip, right? You're gaining all the benefits of forced equity. All right. So, so that was my epiphany. That's like my first deal. Now, um, you know, I had a comment on my Instagram the other day. Now, number one, uh, shameless plug. Um, Instagram is where I do all my content. I give tons of trip tips, tricks, all kinds of stuff about the 203k loan. Um, if you're interested in this at all and anything that I've had to say up until this point, go ahead and follow me at the 203k way here. Uh, this is my handle. Um, there's links in there in the bio to I have free trainings, all kinds of different resources for you guys. I give it all out there. I don't hold anything back. Um, <clears throat> the, there's actually one thing I hold back, which I'm going to give all you guys uh, in a bit just because I like Jay so much. And I know that anybody that's here is not going to be a, a a crappy person and give all my secrets away to everybody. So that's 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 the one uh, thing that I do hide. But you guys are going to get it anyway. Um, so um, deal number two, I had a, on my Instagram the other day. I had this stupid TikTok thing that I made because that's what Instagram is now. And um, sure enough, it went viral. I have like it's been viewed like half a million times or something like that. And it's me like banging my head against a book saying. I tell people about how to use 203k loans to create hundreds of thousands in equity and nobody is listening to me. Um, and that got like a crazy uh, amount of, of follows and all kinds of stuff from it. But one of the funny things is I always get the haters like, yeah, bullshit, try it in this market. Or yeah, you did this five years ago. Okay. Um, me and my wife are doing it again right now. Okay. We're doing it again right now in Long Island, New York. We're in contract on a property that we found, which in a way I'll tell you guys about in a second. 
And these things still work. Okay. It's, you can't you, like, don't say, oh, the market's too hot. And the interest rates are too high. It's bullshit, right? It's all just, it's excuses to give yourself, to keep yourself out of the market. Right. Um, I have an inner circle. I have people that I mentor through this process. I walk them through start to finish for the people that want that type of help. I walk them through start to finish. They are still doing these deals, buying multifamilies and markets. Yes. Are you going and placing lots of offers and getting a lot rejected and getting outbid? Yes. But if you, if you understand not in this market. Power, <laughs> it's not exactly. I said, I said, okay, I will take back the 203k loan and give you $500,000 cash. Go start placing offers again. See if you're doing any better. Okay. You're still going to get tons of offers rejected. You're still going to get tons of, you're still going to get beat out by other guys. It's competitive. It's always been, it was never any easier back then either. So the point I'm trying to make is we're in the process right now. We're doing this for our forever home. Now we're using something called a home style loan, very similar situation, but we're only putting 10% down. What's cool about it is I only put 10% down. I don't have to pay PMI, okay? If anyone knows what PMI, it's mortgage insurance. You pay that if you put less than 20% down. It's basically the bank slapping you on the wrist every month because you didn't ha weren't able to come up with 20% down. But what's cool about the home style is that what your payment is, is actually dictated off of what your property is going to be worth after it's completed. So I don't like to go too much in the numbers yet because it's not a hundred percent yet. We're in contract, hopefully to close in the next two or three weeks, but ultimately the numbers look very good right now. Um, before anything, we're looking at a hundred grand equity and we are purchasing a property in probably one of the most competitive and um, sought after places in Long Island right now. It's me and my wife's dream home location. We've been looking in there for a little while now. And we found this deal off market. We didn't find it on market. We implemented some of the strategies that I'm going to tell you guys here in a second and end with. But at the end of the day, I'm trying to tell people like, don't say real re renovation loans don't work in this market. Don't say that, you know, you're going to get rejected or this stuff, you know, you can't find anything. There's no, it's BS. It's just all BS. I went out and did it all right in the, in the face of everybody, in the face of everybody. And I'm not, listen, I'm not, Jay's way better of an investor than me. Jay's the man. Like I'm a, I'm like a, I'm a small fish. Okay. Whoa. I Whoa. no, you are. <laughs> I don't I know about have, that, but I don't have, I don't have a much, you know, I don't have that many things out there. I'm not a big off market guy, but the whole thing was, I just didn't take no for an answer and went out there and did it. Yeah. Hey, David, real quick, uh, Davian Akers uh, from Portland, Maine. Hey, I made it to Portland, Maine after we saw you last uh, last summer, Matt, as we were doing our tour. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Davian asked, do the houses have to be functional with heat and water uh, once purchased, like purchased with the 203K? That's a great question. Um, the only thing that it needs to be, so there there's virtually no limitations with the 203K, okay? The limitations are that there needs to be an existing structure. Okay. Now the structure has to be a residence. It can't be like an existing shed that you make at home, right? It has to be zoned as a X. You can rezone it right now. It allows you to purchase up to a four unit property. Okay. So you could live in one unit, rent out the other three. Now that's obviously the crown jewel. I did a duplex. Some people just do a single family like me and my wife are doing. Right. But the point being is it could be in any condition. It could be, it could like literally like my property was like literally like dilapidated. I mean, it was no running water. There was no running water yet. The squatters were still using it as if there was running water, um, which was really disgusting. Uh, so, you know, it, it, like it, it could be in complete like decrepitude, right? It doesn't need to be in, in any type of shape. The only thing you are limited by are the FHA loan limits in your market. And that's you Google FHA loan limit. Um, for single family, two family, three family, four family, they all increase. They're actually generally pretty, um, pretty liberal. Like there's a lot of room there um, for the most part. Um, I have a guy that just bought one in DC for like 1.3 million, you know, yeah. and he's using FHA loan money and he controls a million dollar asset now with 25 grand out of pocket or 23, whatever, 28, whatever it was. Um, and, uh, you know, it's that, that that's the beauty of this loan guys. Like I tell people that if you really want to crush this, you want to make sure that you're, that you're leveraging as much as possible. Right. Cause it's only three and a half percent down, especially if you're, if you're buying such that I see, here's the thing, 
you don't need me to do a 203k loan. What I specialize in is helping people do it such that you're looking at it through the eyes of an investor, right? You're buying the property such that like you could be Harry and Sally home buyer and use this loan to just buy it and renovate and use the bank's money to renovate your kitchens and bathrooms, nothing out of pocket, right? You could do that. But if you look at this in, as a form of investor leverage, right? While lever again, caveat is you living in it or using that opportunity, what you're able to do is you're able to basically get, it's like the best burr method you could ever do, right? The traditional burr strategy requires you to put as much down as possible. This is as little down as possible, but everything's upside, right? So, um, so the point I'm getting at is you want to just look at this at the way, as a way of like how to squeeze the most out of the sponge, right? Get a multifamily, get as crappy of a property as you can find and really ensure that you're able to squeeze as much out of this loan as possible. And then ultimately, that's going to be a great foundation. You're going to have equity, you're going to have wealth, you're going to have cash flow. Take that and go buy more deals, which is eventually what I did after my first. It kind of gave me a leg to stand on. It gave me the confidence, it gave me motivation, it gave me the wealth that I can tap into, combine with hard money, private money, and then go into my flipping business, which I have now, right? So that's, um, so it's a great question. Um, and I think uh, one thing I want to leave you with, and I'll, I'll take, I'll, take a couple questions after Jay, if we're cool on time, but I want to go into this, um, this strategy that I did for me and my wife to find something that I think is very sure. unique and I'm happy to share with you guys. Yeah, we can, um, with you being the last session for the day, we can go as okay. long as your schedule allows. Cool. It, you know, yeah, sure. Um, I got to put a cap on it, maybe 15 or 20 yeah. minutes afterwards, but awesome. Um, cool. So, uh, so I see some questions in here guys and I'll definitely answer them. Um, and, and put any questions, I'll save it to the end. But um, so who's interested in hearing out how I'm finding these deals in this market, especially considered to, um, especially considering the 203k loan and what you can do with it? Everybody cool with that? Want me to yes. go into it? I, I yes. really am because we made, like you said earlier, you can make all cash offers and we made sure. 15 of those over the last three months. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Closed on um, zero. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, and it's, and it's, and, and listen, it's, uh, I, I will say with this, it's, it's another strategy where it's like with great power comes great responsibility. So, um, <laughs> so use this, uh, number one, don't tell people about it. Number two, um, just make sure that you are doing this. Uh, um, I don't know. What's the word? Um, ethically. ethically? Yeah. Uh, so, so we'll go into, all right. So, so here's the thing guys. So, um, so me and my wife, so I was, so quick little story for deal number two, right? So deal number two, um, which I, well, not deal number two, renovation loan number two. I want to kind of clarify that or the one that we're doing right now. Okay. Um, me and my wife were looking at a very, very small part of the suburbs, obviously, as all of you know, um, the market's been wild and there's just been a lot of swing every way. And we're trying to look for our own property. So we're looking and we're like going all those open houses where you see, you saw pictures online where there's like 50,000 people lined up down the block. And, you know, we're, we're doing this probably like maybe in the middle of last year, we were like slowly just looking for fixer upper properties. We knew we wanted a fixer. We knew we were going to do this, but I'm like, as far as finding the deal, I kind of fell into the trap of like going to open houses and like just bidding on the stuff on the MLS. And I'm looking and I'm like, I'm, I'm, we're standing on one line one day and we're just talking it over and they're like, yeah, well, you need to be like 50 K over asking for this to even be considered. I'm sitting there. I'm like, what the hell am I doing? Like, why am I doing this? Like, I know exactly what I need to be doing. I do it in my flipping business, but why am I like, why am I sitting and dealing with this crap? Like I know what to do. And obviously like it's, it, but obviously it's like when it's your own house, it kind of like, it kind of changes your, your emotion a bit. And, and like, I felt like I had to go do it the old fashioned way. Like it was a weird thing, but sure enough, like standing on that line, while it's, while it's pouring rain and it's cold and there's a ton of people and they're all making you wear a mask and you're outside. And it's just like, it's just, it's like, what are we doing? Like, what am I doing? Okay. I don't want to do this. I don't want to be one of 87 offers. No, I'm not going to do a song and dance and, and do all this stuff. So what I started to do, I said, I said to me and my wife, I said, we know the neighborhood we want to live in, right? Yes. Okay. We know what type of houses we want to look, we want to buy. Yes. Okay. So let's do what is tried and true. Everyone's heard of it before. And if you haven't, you need to do, hear, hear of it now. We started driving for dollars. Okay. Driving for our house. How do we know what, what we want? Well, 
let's go to exactly what we want. We know the neighborhood we want to know. We know where our criteria. So let's drive the neighborhood and take down every house that we want to do. Now we use an app called Deal Machine. If you guys have heard of it, it's awesome. It's amazing. Um, you know, either they have a free trial, go download it. And it's, I used to write down the addresses by hand as I did, as I did it back when I was trying to crack it in wholesaling. But this is like, it's a GPS, you drive around, you just tap the house and it adds the house, tap the house and adds the house. So we go through our desired neighborhoods, which is really a two mile square radius. So we pretty much drove the whole neighborhood in like a Saturday, right? And we took down every single house that looked like a little dated, right? Again, we're not looking to flip this. We're looking for our forever home and looking in our areas. And we looked at the exact houses that like, oh, we'd like that one. Oh, we'd like that one. Oh, we'd like that one. We got about 150 of those. Okay. So what we started doing is we started sending and that's all. And that was it. 150 houses. That was all that was there. That's all that we came up with. So we started sending some mail and I started pussyfooting around it and I didn't do much with it. And I was like, I don't know, I'm going to do a little off market, but then I started, I started sending some mail and then I started realizing that we were in, we were about to get into something on the MLS. Um, lo and behold, I went to my mentors conference and we have a boardroom mastermind. I'm part of Kent Claudier's mastermind group. He's my mentor. And I went to it and I had to present my business and also everything that was going on. I was telling him I was looking for a house. This was earlier in the year. And, um, I can't ask what I'm doing to find me and my wife a house. And I told him and I said, you, he said, you're not doing enough. And I was like, well, I kind of am. And I, he said, you're not doing enough. Stop being a bitch and go all in on this shit. And he said that in front of 80 people in my boardroom. So now I'm like going home and the next event is in a couple of weeks. And I'm like, if I show back up and do not have anything to show for it, I am going to feel like the biggest loser. Right. <laughs> so I went all in on the mailers. And what I did was I created a, um, you know, I use ballpoint marketing. If you've never heard of them, they're really cool, but they do everything um, kind of by hand. I'm going to try to show everything here. So the address is the address is handwritten. I know it's probably hard to see. Um, you know, it's hand stamped and it, you comes in these little letters. Would you open up this letter if it came to your mailbox? Yes or no? Everybody sure. here, would you ignore this letter? There's no way you would ignore a letter like this. Correct. Nobody would ignore this. Okay. So you had it done. And then we open up, I have a lot of these left over, So that's why I'm opening this one up. And this one was a return to sender. So you open it up and here's what I did. And here's a little piece of the puzzle. And now take this with what you will. But this is the this is the verbiage that worked tremendously well for me. We only sent 650 mailers. I created another little bit bigger bigger list, and I mailed 650 of these a, a month ago. Okay, um, I had like 35 responses, all positive except three, which which isn't isn't too. I don't want to worry too much about. But basically, what I did, and in the inside, it comes in like another little nice greeting card, and I'll go into the verbiage. It's like a wedding is. invitation. Exactly. Well, so it's now it's very, there's yeah, probably a lot question. of females on here that would just want to slap me right now, but it looks like a wedding invitation to me. <laughs> sure. But you will open it and you're going to yeah. read it. Right. So, um, so what we did is we sent this out. We have a little picture of us and our family at the bottom. Now you don't need to have a family. You don't need to have like, have you have a dog, have a whatever you just want to personalize it. And here's the verbiage that we wrote. Dear Steven, my wife and I are outgrowing our one bedroom apartment since having our first child. And we're like, make looking to move back to Massapequa. Massapequa was the area. Just insert your place that you want to go to. You personalize touch. Hey, we're looking to buy a house in X. Okay. We'd love to give you a private offer for your house at, in this case, 210 Seaford Avenue. If you're interested in selling, please call or text me at five one my number and to discuss. Got it. Done. Sincerely, Matt, Michelle, and Luca. That's it. We had an overwhelming response. Now I used to send mailers in my flipping business and the point I'm getting at to you with great power comes great responsibility. Don't lie. Don't say you're doing that and say you're moving into the area with your family because people will call you out on it. Sure enough, I had three responses where people called me. They're like, you're a fucking scumbag. You're using your parent, your family in order to take this house and flip it. Cause I actually had the problem of everyone Googled my name and saw <laughs> that I like have like a biz like, so that was the problem and that you probably, you guys won't have that. But if you have a name for yourself and they, people know you're a flipper in the market, don't use that. But what I'm saying is it's kind of like shooting fish in a barrel a little bit, because number one, you're using a driving for dollars list that nobody else is hitting. Number two, you're getting response rates like crazy because it's a very personalized, different approach. It's not like every other investor out there that's like, I can close fast. I could, you know, all cash and I, everyone could do all cash. It's 2022. Everyone could do all cash. Everyone could close quickly. 
you know, they'll give you a fast cash offer. Like everyone sees the same crap. My parents are older, you know, high equity senior owners. It's the same crap over and over and over again versus you do something a little different. Mind you, it costs a little more. It's like $1.80 a mailer. But when you're sending it to a very niche list of places that you know exactly what you want to do and you put the verbiage the way that I have it, especially if you're looking to do this for the renovation loan, it's a very good way to get it done. And the way we're looking at it right now, we're looking at at least making a hundred grand equity on this property before we even get in the door. Okay. And because we were able to have a conversation with the seller directly, the seller, they didn't, it was a kid's movie, you know, uh, an older lady, the kids didn't want to deal with it. You know, they wanted to leave all the crap in the house. They didn't want to fix anything perfect for this scenario. And because of that, they saw the value in selling to us directly. They knew they could get more if they listed it. They knew they could, they acknowledged that, but they said for the fact of you're taking it off our hands and they also like that it's going to a family, you know what I mean? But they, they like, you could take it off our hands. You don't have to, you know, we're not going to have to fix anything. They were willing to take uh, you know, a lower cut on that guys. If you just got rid of having to pay realtor commissions alone or having to get in a bidding war is, is sending out a couple hundred of these worth it. I would say so. Right. Yeah. Hopefully does this help? Does this cool Jay? I mean, is this a yeah. cool little thing? Yeah, I, I think I've heard of, and you said it was ballpoint marketing, right? I think Hollis. Ballpoint marketing, yeah. That's um, that, and I, I put a link in the chat, but I wanted to make sure that was it. But yeah, it's Ryan Dossie's company. Um, okay. Ryan's a good a good dude, um, and he's a, he's another one of the real ones for sure. Um, you know, I again, I get nothing out of pitching out of it. I just go with what works, right? Yeah. I just think it's, uh, you know, I have an affiliate link, but I don't care. I want you guys to, I want you guys to use it. I don't give a shit. I just want you to use it, um, and it's just something that's working for me right now. And I just tell people like, you don't need to. Like you don't have to look at what's on the MLS, like go out and get out there. There is still opportunity to be had in every single crazy market. I guarantee you there are flippers in your market still crushing it right now. The yeah. thing is, is there, and this is coming from someone that depended on foreclosures prior to 2020, I depended only on foreclosures, right? So mm -hmm. I felt the pain immediately because foreclosures absolutely evaporated. I had two foreclosure deals in contract March 10th. 2020 okay as they're canceling the march madness tournament i'm realizing oh shit i don't know if i'm going to be able to close on these two deals sure enough i couldn't nobody wanted to lend nobody in that four week period nobody wanted to lend i could not close and i had to back out of those two deals and it hurt because looking back i would have made a mountain of cash on those two deals because of what the market did but the point i'm getting at is is i would depended entirely on foreclosures up until this point and now that i started implementing off market and especially doing it with a unique flavor now again this doesn't work for everybody and i hope you're understanding of that but it really works for the 203k loan these loans allow you to purchase things with a little bit down and you could purchase as is. It gives you a leg up in this in in this world where um, you're able to you know you don't want to deal with seller like it's a seller's market. You can bring a lot of value to the table. Hopefully this is helpful, guys. And um, yeah, I, I think that's it, all it I is got. for me. Like you know, one thing I love about this is going to sound so conceited, but I I like the the idea here because you know we we're taking a completely different strategy of what we're doing for investing. We're looking, right. we want to buy three or four short term rental homes uh, and convert it to our, like what we've done with our primary is going to be turned into an Airbnb and sure. we're just going to live in them through a season, right? When it's the yeah. downturn of that season, we're just going to live there. So it has been extremely difficult to find properties. We have not, I've done a little bit of what you suggested, but not, using ballpoint marketing, just using the standard postcard. And I'm not consistent enough with that, that well, as really my good, that. my good mentor, Ken Claudia would, would say to you, he'd say, stop being a bitch. I, well, I'm not my only, I'm kidding. I'm no, just, no, no, I'm no, no. I, I need to hear I'm that. Saying, I'm not it's, calling it's, you a bit. I'm just saying, I, listen, I get it. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a priority stack for me right, and things right. have bubbled up yep. over that. And yep. It's it, and those things are falling off, and we're about. I'm about to get close uh, back to it. Let me. There's a couple of questions that popped up in the chat, and for these those of you who who join later, or whatnot, your name comes across as Jay Helms. It's because of the link that I sent out was the wrong one. So Jay Helms asked, <laughs> uh, "Are you selling your current home to go live in the new property for a year? If not, how are you living in the new property for a year? Right? Like how?" Uh, 
Yeah. How are you living there when you fix it up and your, and your wife say, or is your wife saying it's your current home? How, how's that? So, so that's a great question. So right now um, you can't see it cause it's whitewashed. Um, but I live right outside of New York city. Um, there's actually a really nice view behind me. I don't know why you can't see it. Um, but we're in a one bedroom. I'm not lying in our mailer, right? We're renting a one bedroom right now. So that's our current home. Um, you know, I'm kind of in like that Grant Cardone world of like, I kind of didn't want to own anything that wasn't an asset for a little while. Plus it was like, it fit all our, it allowed us to travel, everything like that. Hmm. Um, we just had our first baby last year. So, uh, so we are not in, in tune with paying 4,000 a month for 700 square feet in New York city anymore. So we're going to the suburbs and, um, you know, it's, it, it, this is a, a situation where we're going into the next property. Now, again, guys, it doesn't necessarily need to, it's very given on your situation. Cool thing about the 203 K loan, you're allowed to wrap up to the first six months mortgage payments into the principal of the loan. Okay. Oh. Because they do understand that you probably won't be living in the property if it's a complete construction zone. Now, in our case, our property that we're looking to move into doesn't need a ton. Of, we're putting about a hundred grand into it. it. It means a lot, but it just needs a refresher. It's not, again, this is our forever home, but I'm saying like, even for our forever home, we're still getting it. We're still leveraging this process, right? We're still finding deals off market. We're still getting things under value. We're still finding fixer uppers and we're building equity into the property. Even on our own home, you don't have to just because it's your own home also make it a liability, right? So um, we're not, we're going to move in. Um, you know, we'll probably live in through the renovation because it's not that crazy but if it's going to be a crazy reno where there's going to be a lot of like you know a lot of duh, it's just not going to be livable for example my first property was, wasn't livable at all um you know i was living outside there and i was supplementing that with with that renovation um up front um the you know the mortgage payments up front and then you eventually get in now it does increase the principle of your loan so it's one of those things is the juice worth the squeeze? Like, do you want to yeah. pay it? Like, is, are you too close to your loan limit? Maybe hang out outside of it. But that's, that's really how that whole thing works. Hopefully that answers your question, Jay Helms. Yeah. <laughs> um, a second question is, and I'm going to paraphrase this is how do you mm -hmm. find lenders that work with two or three K this person's in West Virginia can't uh -huh. seem to find a lender that works there. And sure. are there nationwide lenders who, yes. Yep. Focus Okay. Great question. So yes, there are. Um, the big names are Caliber Home Loans. Um, they do them nationally. Uh, Cherry Creek Mortgage. Jeff Onofrio runs that. Um, guys, it, it look up my. You know, um, you could go to my Facebook group. Uh, I'll type it in the chat here. Facebook.com/groups/the203kway. Um, you can join my Facebook group. There's a lot of national lenders in there. Again, I get nothing out of this. I just want to make sure that you guys are using the best lenders to make sure they get you over the finish line. Because if there's one piece of advice I can give that before you guys leave here, do not do this loan without a lender that intently knows this process. They will maybe say they've done them. Make sure they actually have done them and done multiple of them. Because the guys that have done them versus not done them, it like in my situation, my lender had never done one before. I found that out the hard way. Um, <laughs> don't don't make the, that mistake. Now again, it was still worth it. It was still okay, but you know that a lender that knows what they're doing is is extremely important on this. Um, if you don't, if they don't understand the process, it could get very ugly. Um, but there's a lot of lenders in my Facebook group. Another way to do it is you could use, look up the uh, 203K endorsement summary. Um, you Google it, it's, it's HUD, it's public knowledge. So you go to um, 203K endorsement summary go, summary, go to the HUD's website, scroll all the way down to the bottom to the most recent month and year. There'll be a link there. They put one out every month. And it's basically a summary of every lender in every major market, you know, every market in the country, right? Every state, um, and how many 203Ks they've done this month and this year. Um, and you can go in and you can call on that list and just call those people, look up their local branch, say, hey, who heads up renovation lending in this department? Um, but to answer the question again, they lend nationally. So if someone's licensed in West Virginia, but they're located in New York. I mean, I have guys in my inner circle do it all the time. Like they work with lenders that are in Jersey, but they're doing the deal down in Florida. Um, if they have a handle on it, it doesn't matter where they are. Like with national lending now, you don't really need to, even with a 203K, you don't really even need to be local. And I'm gonna, I, I Googled that site. I'm gonna show you my no, propeller awesome. head, right? So I found the site and I instantly know that's written and that page is written with Cold Fusion, which is okay. like, but I can't copy and paste the right Zoom link for everybody. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. So, 
you yeah, know, um, it's a, it's a government crappy website. I yeah, actually have right. uh, I have a tool that does it automatically, but again, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, the, the, my, my free training here, if my screen's still up, uh, 203kway.com slash free training. Um, that's just an hour plus. Again, I know we only have a little time here, but it's an hour plus case study of exactly how I did this, how you could do the same thing. Um, and there's like all about finding lenders and everything in that free training as well. So you guys can, you guys can check that out. Um, again, a little over an hour long. I don't let you skip around uh, because it's jam packed with info. And I know that people, everyone has got ADD like me and they're going to go on and want to skip around. Don't skip around um, because there's a lot of info. And if you skip one part, a lot of it won't make sense. So, and for folks who are, are looking to do this for an investment, um, yeah. you said one year occupancy, uh, after purchase or after close, is that the initial close where you buy the property and you're starting renovations or is there a later close that happens? It's, it's right? from the date that you close on the, pro that you on buy the, the property. Okay. Yep. So okay. in my case, it took me eight months to finish the renovation after my closing date. I refinanced out immediately because I built 130 grand in equity. So I refinanced into a lower rate mortgage and I got rid of the MIP, the PMI. Um, home style loan, very similar loan. The short, short, the shorthand of it is the home style is better for single family. Um, what's cool about the home style as well, like Jay, in your case, if you're looking for like Airbnbs and stuff like that, it's that it's that like vacation home loan. Same mm -hmm. thing. You can do 10% down 10 and a half or, or 15% down, still get all the benefits of the loan and you don't have to live there as yeah. long as your debt to yeah. income ratio goes goes from it. Now, again, obviously some banks have been getting a little squirrely with Airbnb since it's been all the rage lately. So you just have to make sure you're playing within the confines of it. But a lot of them, they'll give you the 10% vacation home thing. Yeah. You say you're living there 14 days a year, whether you live there 14 days a year, that's up to your accountant to make that all happy and make sense. But at the end of the day, it's a cool thing because you could buy a fixer upper, you know, in like a vacation spot, still only put down, I mean, again, comparatively to hard money or private money or something like that, you're only putting down 15% equity. Yeah. Um, and you could still take advantage of this loan and you don't have to live there but it's limited to single family that's the and, other caveat to it yeah well one to four units right oh you're talking about home style loan is, is home style family. loan if you don't yep. live there you can only buy a single family yep. they won't let you do a non-owner occupied multifamily. yeah gotcha i love it uh nick asked uh is the loan for the 203k amount for the renovations as well or is it just for the value of the home and you need to come up with the capital to make the uh, repairs Yep. Uh, great question. No, it's ever. So it's purchase price plus renovation is the loan amount. So in my case, my purchase price on my 203k property was 270, put 80,000, $80,000 was the renovation. That's the reno estimate. Now you build that estimate with someone called a 203k consultant um, and your, and your, and your contractor, they build an estimate that estimate gets added into the loan amount and at closing gets put into escrow and you draw down from that amount, same way you would do it with insurance work, hard money, anything. If you do a hard money loan, they're very, they give you the, you tell them to estimate on your renovation costs and you tell them, and then you get a draw and you draw down from that as you complete the process, as you complete the project. Right. Um, so it's, yeah, so it's only three and a half. So for example, let's just use round numbers. You purchase a property for 50,000, you're putting 50,000 into it right? You're putting 50,000 in renovation. Your loan amount is going to be a hundred thousand dollars minus your down payment. So whatever, 90, 96,500, you're paying that three and a half percent based on that hundred thousand. So it would be $3,500 is all you would need on a, in a situation like that. Does that make to sense? Come up for close. Yep. I think Nick is shaking his head. Yes. He's, yeah. All <laughs> Two right, cool. thumbs up. <laughs> awesome. Good. Glad I'm being clear about it, but, uh, yeah, hopefully, um, hopefully this was helpful for everybody. Hopefully it's, uh, I know uh, there's not too much info about it out there. Again, you know, I only want, I wanted to do as much as I could with a little time and, and add a little value for you guys at the end. But, um, you know, if you ever are any more interested in this, go ahead, follow my Instagram. I mean, I have YouTube also. I'm all over, you know, just look up the 203K way. You'll find all my stuff. Um, the free training again, goes a little deeper on this exactly like step-by-step -step how I did everything. And um, yeah. Matt, thank you very much. Um, valuable, valuable stuff as always. I still think about that pizza that we met you at in New York. <laughs> uh, I think it was Uno. Pizza yeah, yeah, yeah. Maria. Yep, yep. 
Well, some listen, good we stuff, gotta man. Get you back We're gonna here. have we'll to make it back to, other, up that like, way, really to, just for the I'll, pizza, right? Yeah. Um, well, Pizzeria Uno is. I have to say, just as a New Yorker, I have to defend my title. Pizzeria Uno is a Chicago, Chicago pizza. based. Yeah. <laughs> I know, and you had it in New York. Now, listen, if it were up to me, I would bring you to a couple different places uh, that would really probably blow your socks off. Too, I'm going. I'm going to take you up. I'm going to give you another another excuse to come back here, dude. That's all. Our, our kids cannot stop talking about New York enough, and it. I put love me on edge the entire time we were there. Just I, I, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. It's, it's, a, it's, it's got it. It's got its quirks, but it is. It's pretty. It's a pretty cool place. It yeah. is. <laughs> well, Matt, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the valuable information. I, I'm. Sure. Um, I, I have not even thought about doing this for our desires for short term, short term yeah. rentals. But, but now that you called me out, and I know what I need to do anyway. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I, I, we're here to help you, man. Um, you know, again, it works. It works right now. Like I always just was, I was just sick and tired of people being like, oh, back in 2016, you could do it. Like it wasn't easy back then either. Like people think like the grass is always greener. Like in another five years, people are going to have something to, something that, you know, when I about. say people, I mean like just the trolls on the internet. They're going to yeah. find another reason not to get into the market. Listen, deals yeah. are made in every market cycle. It doesn't matter. The market's going up, down, sideways, backwards. It doesn't freaking matter. There's a deals to be made in every part of it. You just got to be resourceful. That's all. Absolutely. Well, Matt, thank you for figuring this out for us. Thank you for sharing it with us. Oh, yeah. As this wraps up day one of the W2 Capitalist Virtual Summit 2022, if you're late for, from joining us and you didn't see my pitch at the very beginning, uh, through this summit, I'm announcing beginner boot camp. We're actually going to start on that this Saturday, this coming Saturday. There is limited seating for you guys to see that. Uh, and a couple other different ways to connect with us um, w2capitalist.com forward slash AMA will redirect you to that crazy. Oh, where you redirect you to that crazy website. But this is a monthly Ask Me Anything. It's going to change to weekly here pretty soon. Um, and then we, of course we have the mastermind. And, uh, if you have any doubts whatsoever about what it, what joining a mastermind can do for you, Matt mentioned this earlier, getting around a mentor, getting around people who are going to, um, push you to the next level. Uh, it's amazing. And why I say that is because last year we had almost 10% of our members, uh, achieve financial freedom. Uh, they have been in the mastermind for a couple of years, been investing for a couple of years, been in the mastermind for at least a year, I should say, uh, and built their portfolio up enough. Um, and then this year we've got five people on the docket, three of which have already submitted their resignation and um, achieving that financial freedom number. So um, if you don't, here's my, here's my challenge to everybody who's still uh, listening and, and watching this is every year you should have a coach for a season. You should always have a mentor, somebody you can call on, but you need to join a mastermind. You need that routine joining, being around like-minded folks who are going to push you to the next level and get you some creative ideas, just like uh, Matt shared with us today. So guys, thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for being here. We're going to do this tomorrow. Same time. I'm going to update the link uh, or try to and send it out. So when we join and uh, I just change my screen i don't barbara i don't know you but there's a pink guitar hanging behind you i don't know if maybe tomorrow you can open up and do a little ditty for us i don't know i don't uh but thank you all for being here we will see you hopefully the rest of this week and by the way this is something i haven't announced yet uh, until now is what we're going to do because this is so jam-packed during the day we're going to do a virtual happy hour on friday uh so there's going to be a separate email that comes out with the appropriate link, uh, I promise you. And so we can all come in, do a little virtual happy hour. We're gonna do breakout rooms. Uh, so you guys can all connect with not only our presenters, but everybody uh, that's here uh, throughout the week. So be on the lookout for that email as well. All right? It begins with a thought, an idea that keeps growing in your mind. You spend days, months, or even years just simply thinking about it. There are many ways to get started, take action and make progress but both you and I know the best way is to have a guide as you surround yourself with like-minded people peers who are on your level that are actively taking the next step you'll feel empowered and your confidence will breed confidence having so many options to choose from when purchasing a real estate investing educational program 
You'll soon find out that just a few will understand your thoughts, your fears, and your expectations. For the next six weeks, I will be your coach. Grasp your vision, create realistic goals, and diligently apply what I've learned from investing since 2014 and deliver a framework for you to build your experience and portfolio. Seating is limited. Register today.